it's been a while between parts for this, but I felt like I'll come back to this stuff. I really just want to have, like, the whole point of my channel is not to do it to uh, try to monetize or to harvest likes or to try and even be popular. I'm, I would be failing at that anyway. What I'm trying to do is uh, just have fun and, you know, like, if my friends, who, because I live abroad, if my friends, you know, kind of miss hanging out and playing video games with me, they get a chance to have fun playing video games. I enjoy playing and just, you know, chatting as if I'm still there, you know. It's like kind of like just, especially in the quarantine era we live in now, we don't get to talk very often anymore. And I'm always abroad anyway, and the borders are shut, so I can't go see him even if I wanted to spend the money on the flight. Hope you get the time off work. So, um... Oh, I just chose this one, because I saw I had a low response, but I'm pretty sure the time attacks are hard for me, because I'm a baby. So being... <laughs> recently on one of my LPs, some guy who clearly thought this kind of guy who has a Smurf account on LOL was like, and is teaching people the ways of things. Obviously, was clearly like, oh, what's your niche? Oh, you need to do your research. It's like, no, I don't need to do shit, mate. It's my channel. Fuck off. <laughs> like, you know, like, I know exactly what I'm doing. Like the, the whole playthrough with Akami and RE3, for those of you who don't know, and Akami is still ongoing, I just haven't played it for a while. <laughs> um, those are blind, that's the whole point. They're like blind runs. You'll see my first experience playing that game, which is why I'm bad. Same with this, actually. I haven't played this before and mastered it. As you can clearly see from the first few episodes, I'm falling off the bike. The whole point is, um, I'm just doing it for some fun. I'm just doing it, and I, like you're seeing my first experience, so that it's like a natural reaction, so that I'm not, because I'm not very good at faking reactions. Going, oh wow, something I knew was gonna happen, or I've seen like eight times before. I completely did. Oh, isn't that shocking, everyone? Like, that's why it's sometimes ill-researched as well, because I don't know. I'm blind going in. That's the whole point. You're seeing my blind reaction. And the amount of people who are like, oh my god, like, oh, this is, it's like, dude, I'm not here to make you the fucking boomer consumer, Abby. Oh, sorry, Karen, was this not the product that was described to you? <laughs> like, you know, you're not even paying for it, dude. Literally, I'm sat here just doing shit, living my life. This is a really slow time because I forgot I was actually doing that. <laughs> I was on a rant. Yeah, like, you know, I, like a lot of people say things like this to me. One of the guys that watches this, who's like a mate of mine, was like, well, what's your niche? I don't understand. There's no niche. We're hanging out. We're playing video games. I'm talking dumb bullshit. <laughs> you ever like that? Or you don't like that? talk about some weird anecdotes that happened in my life, or I just talk about dumb bullshit that I find entertaining, and we just play video games badly. No, no, oh, like, you know, using anything in my identity, or like my, uh, uh, you know, I've got a gimmick, or I'm clickbaiting everything, it's, I, I don't give a shit. Nothing's going to be monetized there anyway, because half of it gets copyright stricken. <laughs> All of the bike and my shit got copyright stro struck, uh, which means even if I was hitting those numbers to get my stuff's ad, ad revenue, I feel like, you know, if I wanted to go down that route, the best way is to be genuine. I wouldn't want to be one of those guys who's got red circles and dumb reaction faces on their thumbnails going, <gasps> ZOMG! <laughs> totally shocking, this zombie game had a zombie in it. <gasps> Who would have thought Comic Sans or whatever the fuck? I mean, I'm deliberately being dated with that like, attitude, but you know what I mean? Hey, dude, you ever like my game? You ever like my voice? I don't like my voice. Some people say that my voice is... Actually, a lot of people lately. Saying they think my voice is attractive lately, and I was like, my voice is annoying. It's like, nyeh. But not even in a skeletal way. It's like, kind of like... 
Yeah, if I had Skeletal's voice, man, I'd just wreck. I'd be like a pussy magnet. <laughs> Bet you didn't think I'd get laid this much, He-Man. <laughs> oh god, pussy magnet Skeletal, that's amazing. Now that's a bit. That's a bit right there. If I was in the business, I'd have t-shirts. And uh, to prove that I'm not here to monetize, I will not make a Pussy Magnet Skeletal t-shirt. That's how you know you can trust me, because I'm not a capitalist pig. <laughs> Who's just trying to sell you shit all the time. So if you like my stuff, please go and give me money on my Patreon. That's, that's a joke, I don't have a Patreon. Uh, what was I saying? I also, my setup is shit. <laughs> I need to buy a mic. <laughs> I'm using the internal mic on my MacBook Air, which is the cheapest, shittiest model of MacBook I got. I can literally buy. It's like a two-year-old model. Oh, it overheats every time I'm editing shit. I'm editing shit in GarageBand, and I used to have a working version of Logic way back in the day. Logic's fucking kicks ass. Garage Band is like Logic Light, essentially. With a lot of like decent shit taken out of it, but funky wood paneling on the interface instead. If you know what you're doing, you can make stuff in Garage Band work, it's fun. But, um. What's I saying? Yeah, um. Yeah, I'm not all into that whole, like, side hustle, side hustle, gotta monetize. Like, I like the idea, but, like, dude, once you've put enough of your work into stuff, you just realize that you're just doing things because you enjoy them. And that's really the only way you can enjoy do do things. There's not much point, like, um, for example, I've been writing books for ages now, but I can't just force the book. You know, I draw a lot. I can't just force the drawing. I, like, wrote music, and... Forcing an album for a, uh, I had to force out an entire blues album for a, uh, my uni project, and it was shit. <laughs> as a songwriter, it was shit. I'm coming off all the time as well. Swaying all over. It's been a while, like I said. This is crap. My time is crap. Didn't know what the best time was, but I'm not hitting those numbers. Yeah, and like... I'm just not about that, man. I get it. Like, I could be making big money by actually being a good writer and writing the novels that I wanted to write as perfectly as I could <laughs> as a side hustle. And, like, like, I mean, I don't know if I should be talking about this because it hasn't been confirmed yet, but um, I was going to start a podcast with someone talking about the ESO industry and, like, Got mad gossip and shit, basically. And um, I'm sure if I put the effort in, we could really like. Because people love gossip, man. Someone's playing Vuvu Zela outside my house. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like talking about my voice. Bunch of people in Asia think my voice is deep and sexy and like very masculine. And I'm like. In my country, it really just hovers around that kind of annoying nasal baritone, but it's like quite low, I think, for them, and they think it's a it set it's set in a, like a frequency that they think is attractive for some reason. Although the people who said it may just be weirdos. Oh, time attacks! Why you do me this way? Let's do some races. I'm sure I can win this really hard race after not playing for a while. Um, yes. Red by Go Fast is Italian. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of people are like, I really like your voice. In fact, over the past two years, people have been saying to me, like, girls come up to me and like, I really like your voice, it's very sexy. And some guys come up to me and say, your voice is really attractive, I wish I had a voice like yours. And like, I don't know, if you've been listening to this shit, and I have, because I have to edit my own stuff, because I'm not paying someone to do something, which is, you know, a hobby I do for no benefit whatsoever. Um, I hate the sound of my own voice, but most people do, don't they? They hear their own voice, 
I guess this is also vocal training as well, because like um, I've been doing a lot of vocal training recently to try and like improve my teaching. Because I feel like this, if you have quite a strong and quite a good ability, vocal range and a great projection, and you listen to lots of examples of your natural speech, you start to realize as a reflective teacher when working, oh, why are the students who it's a second language to why they're having trouble following you because sometimes I speed up, sometimes I mutter, sometimes I do that like, you know, you know, you know, like kind of thing. And it, I start doing that kind of like the equivalent of canceling a combo into another thing, which is like what we're all doing all the time as native speakers of any language, which is just filling spaces between each word in a sentence with like either the next word and just cancelling certain words before they've really finished because everyone knows what you were saying you know cutting off the ng sound in same so it sounds like same and then you're super same <laughs> and um filling spaces when you don't know what you're going to say next with ums uhs this like you know uh shenma kind of thing it's just there's, a, there's like an army of Vuvuzelas outside my house. It's really fucking weird. It's like, it's like an army of cybernetic geese. They're just going, ha, 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 ha. I'm just like, what the fuck? I've given up asking why in China, because then they always say to me, oh, it's an ancient, like, when I was in Hong Kong, I was like, why are people going around banging pots and pans? I knew it was Chinese New Year, but like outside of Hong Kong, I never encountered this. It sounds like people are just running around trashing the neighborhood with crockery. What the fuck? Or like, you know, with like dinner, like cooking ware. And they're like, oh no, we do that over here. It's for like scaring away the demons during the uh, Chinese New Year festival and other ones as well. And you're like, oh, okay. Hey man, I'm not gonna judge your weird cultural shit because our weird cultural shit's even fucking weirder, and we just think it's normal too. So, whatever, we're all weirdos. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Weirdest way to put like cultural um, allowances. Like it's not my country. What the fuck should I care? Man, they had a bagpipe. I was watching a dragon dance at the Mid Autumn Festival in Hong Kong, and it was sick. There was dragon dancing. Like there was made, the dragon made of incense, and there's these guys doing the traditional dance. But they had a bagpipe section, and everyone was a bit like, hey, "People talk about cultural appropriation, but I'm pretty sure like, and it was like from the Scottish division of Hong Kong, and I was like, there are Scot enough Scottish people that they have a bagpipe section. Very weird. Very weird." And they all had kilts, and there were even girls dressed up doing like, um, was it was it river dance as well, which is more an Irish thing, isn't it? Oh, Welsh thing. Honestly, I don't even know my own like nations stuff at this point. Very weird, but it was very interesting, and I loved seeing the dragon dance. And if you've never seen a dragon dance in a traditional sense like that, it is very entertaining. And a very like unique thing to see. Check me out. I'm like Michael Palin. Except not beloved. And not, not old. Getting there though. Someone asked me when my degree finished recently, and I was just like doing the full Zoidberg. Oh, I'm so old. And they were like, oh what? <laughs> you know? 2013, man. Seven years ago now. What was I saying? Yeah, man, I'm getting a lot of, like, people, like... It feels like nowadays people have forgotten how to just have fun and hang out, you know? Everything has to be like, well, why are you doing this thing? Is it to monetize? I don't understand. What's the point in, like, doing this thing if you can't monetize it somehow? You need a side hustle, man. It's like... Do I? <laughs> I... 
I mean, I put things out there, but honestly, if you put things out there and either people don't like it or it's not particularly good or people just... It doesn't hit an audience or anything and nobody buys it, then you're still wasting your time. So you might as well have fun doing it. And that's the thing that I... That's my approach coming to writing is if I'm not enjoying it and I feel like I'm just going to put this book out and it's going to make at least hundreds because everyone will want to read it. Yeah, get it out as soon as possible. Just force production. I'm not going to enjoy it. And the whole point is that I do it for a side hobby to enjoy it, like basically everything I do. Aside from my job, of course. And you know, if people want to pick it up, they can pick it up. I don't even bother, like, cross-promoting. Because honestly, at this point, I'm thinking of taking one of my books down, because I feel like I'll probably get done for libel. Um, although it actually require the people that I'm talking mad shit about in that book to uh, read it. <laughs> no one's read it. So, uh, yeah, that's probably going to be material as well for this podcast if we ever get around to doing that. So I might as well take it down, because it'll be essentially rehashing old stereos, old stuff that I've already talked about. And you just end up buying a book that is exactly the same thing, and starts becoming a problem then. I don't like doing that to people, you know. There's a few, like, I got stung by that with a few biographies that I read of, like, famous musicians, and then a few of their other biographies are rehashes of the same stuff they said in the previous book. Dave Mustaine got me on that. But one of his earlier books was taking a lot of material from a certain period of his life, and then the next book was talking about a very similar period of time, and then really only embellishing a little bit more past that. And he was basically just word for word copy pasting some parts of his old autobiography, and you just felt a bit like, I felt like I already knew that because I read the old one. You know, the thing about biographies is like you end up going over the same shit again and again, and like, not anyone would read my biog. I never was a big fan of uh, reminiscing. Yeah. I win. Oh man, we were talking about metal music last time, weren't we? I was listening to Dissection. That was pretty good fun. Dissection uh, and the, uh, the Somber Lane and a bunch of their other stuff, which I name escapes me because I didn't research for this because, yeah, I don't do my research. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, that was sick. I mean, I was meaning to listen to more of it. You know what also got me, like, when we were talking about music? I completely failed to mention Tool. Now, Tool were a really big band for me like a few of their albums and then like the new one came out recently and I was listening to it during quarantine and I just I mean I just didn't get in on it and I felt a bit like bad that I wasn't enjoying it because I wasn't enjoying it I'm sorry people who like the new Tool album I only I didn't give it as much chance as the other Tool albums, I have to admit. Uh, I really liked... Uh, was it called Lateralis, the uh, that album? The one with the body on the front. How have I forgotten? It was one of my favorite albums of all time. Sick album. I had the one with the sleeve and everything where it, like, you know, each layer took off another part, like at the black, and then it had like the black cover with Tool written on the front and then you could see like layers of the body in the same pose it was uh it was really cool one of my favorite albums of theirs I know a lot of people like their older stuff which I also enjoyed Anima and Undertow uh I liked 10,000 Days but I can't sit down and say oh yeah 10,000 Days was my favorite I listened to it a lot uh, there's ones like Wings for Marine stuff I really liked. Uh, uh, didn't mind the part, but it got overplayed a lot. 
kind of like sober, got overplayed a lot in a lot of radio shows and a lot of bars and places I was hanging out at. I could still listen to sober though, because it's been a while since sober was overplayed. Uh, oh yeah, you got Schism on the uh, Materalis album. And I keep calling it that until I remember what it is. What it is really cool. Oh, that was a good album. Such a fucking good album. Like, just track after track on that was beastly. Like, The Patient. Um, oh, shit. I'm starting to feel like I should actually do my research. <laughs> remember, shit, like, my memory is fading, man. I'm an old man. Not even 30, and I can't remember shit. I went for a huge prog metal phase. I think everyone did in a certain part when everything was prog metal. We had Crack the Sky around that time, and I was listening to that album as well. Uh, I had Porcupine Trees, The Incident, around this time as well, and that made me go and listen to their older stuff. Uh, Dream Theaters, Black Cloud. Clouds and Silver Linings. Is that what it was called? Last one with Portnoy on, wasn't it? Or was it the first one without Portnoy? On? So like that. Last one with Portnoy on, and he then left soon afterwards. It was a good album. I really like The Count of Tuscany. I've mentioned that one before. Um, but the whole album, Wither, uh, Rite of Passage, it's just got a lot of good stuff on it. These guys are a bit more aggressive today. Uh, yeah, it had a lot of good stuff on it. I like that album. Really like Crack the Sky. I was going to sit and just spend a whole episode of this talking about Mastodon, but I don't know if anyone's really as interested as I am about that. Because my, my interaction with Mastodon was very strange. I started with Crack the Sky, then went backwards. I already kind of heard of some of the tracks on Blood and Thunder, then went back and listened to it. Blood Mountain? Blood Mountain. I feel like it was called Blood Mountain. I like Sleeping Giant. Uh, is it Circle of Sisquatch? Circle of Sisquatch. Um, oh, what was that one called? It has a weird Colony of Birchmen. A few of them are on there that are pretty good. Wolf is Loose is pretty good. It's a good opener. But I didn't enjoy it as much as uh, some other ones. Uh, like, to be honest, it, like, Blood Mountain has a lot of tracks, just a lot of tracks, and some of them you're a bit like, I felt like there were more misses on that album than any other album from Classic Mastodon. Like, they don't have very many misses though, like, just stuff that I didn't particularly get on with, because I just didn't really give it much of a chance, because I'm an asshole. It kind of came to me in a weird point where I was a bit like, eh, no, I'm happy with this, these two albums, Crack the Sky and Blood and Thunder. I don't need to like get any uh, more Mastodon right now. Then I heard March of the Fire Ants live and I was like, oh, I go check out Remission. They really just listen to March of the Fire Ants on repeat. So yeah, I doubt I'm like an authority super fan on Mastodon, but I was always really big into them, and I wouldn't ever turn down Mastodon. Uh, seeing them live, and any new material they make, I'm still pretty in on it. I didn't mind uh, the next one, was it called? The Hunter? Uh, the one with um, Black Tongue and all of that on it. Uh, Stargasm really stuck out for me. Uh, what was that one called? Run to the forest, you can run to the trees. You can hide, but you'll never escape. There's some of the lyrics that I always remember. Oh, that's cool. So, is it called All the Heavy Lifting? Is it that one? I remember Octopus Has No Friends, but I didn't really enjoy Octopus Has No Friends. I just remember the title. Uh, it is okay. Blasteroid's okay. What's, um... Like the second or third, Curl of the Burl. I like Curl of the Burl. That was alright. It was okay, Lee Track. I really like Black Tongue, though. Just a very a vast departure from Crack the Sky. If you come in on Crack the Sky and you're like, oh, this is the direction they're going in, 
and then you listen to that old stuff and go, oh, I see they used to do this, but the direction they're going in, then they kind of go back away from the whole concept album prog shit that Crack the Sky was and just go like more like in the direction of Blood Mountain again and uh, the other albums. And you're like, okay, that's fine. It's a fine album. But the, the hint for me that it might be a bad album was when Kerrang! pretended that they didn't exist up until then. And then they were like, oh, the new album's absolutely amazing. Whenever Kerrang! say that, that means, oh, this is really accessible and it's probably nothing like the album you enjoyed in the past because they ignore good albums and Kerrang! And they go, this is marketable. There's a song here that's two to four minutes and can get radio play. Because that's what Kerrang! is like nowadays. I had the same problem with Phonic where I was like, Mirror of Retribution is sick. Then I kind of forgot they existed for a bit and just kind of, oh, you know, other metals playing, I listened to Five Finger Death Punch or something weird. Some other weird bands. Um, and then I saw them being featured in Kerrang! of all places, Phonic, and then people saying, oh, Broken Jeets absolutely amazing off of the new album. What was that album called with the machete? I didn't check it. One with Takao on as well. And um, it just made me sit down and think, oh no. They've somehow turned into screamo slam crap music. No, because Kerrang are paying attention to them, so that must be bad news. And no, no, I really like that album. Just the moment Kerrang pay attention to a band, I think, oh god, they've turned into Asking Alexandria or Black Veil Brides. Yay! Fun! <laughs> you know, just my brain goes, great, we've just hit the point. I'll do one more, like, single race, then we'll do a championship in the second part. Yeah, my brain just goes, great, so they've ruined it. And then it was fine. It's just they got better production values, uh, they stopped sounding so much like Norwegian black metal and kind of have a bit more depth to their sound, sonically speaking. And uh, it was a little more like minimalist when it needed to be in a lot less just pure speed the whole time, which is Mirror of Retribution is just endless melodic black metal. Whereas um, I feel like it was a little more dialed back for the that album, the Machete Man album. <laughs> I really love the concepts behind the next album, which I also forget the name of because I'm terrible. But, like, I've always loved Sonic. Mastodon, I really came back on Mastodon for Once More Around the Sun, and I was like, uh, I'm, I came in on Once More Around the Sun, like, this is gonna be the least hype shit. I reckon it's literally called Once More, Round or whatever, so it made me sit there and think, oh, okay, they're just, this is a cheap cash-in one. And I actually enjoyed a lot of what was on there, probably more than I did on the Hunter album, which is weird, because, like, I just took it for what it is, because I stopped listening to what the media was saying after around this point, and I just, well, I couldn't be bothered, and I started living abroad, so Kerrang! and Metal Hammer aren't, like, for sale over here. So, you know, if I was living in Europe, I'd probably still be buying these uh, copies of things just whenever I'm in a news agent going, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll pick up like that, or i pick up Top Gear magazine or something like that, so I would be doing that, but nowadays I just listen to things in isolation, and I've helped it, I've found it helps me to enjoy music a lot more without hearing other people's opinions. Good. And then you end up with a little more of a uh, stranger opinion, but it's your opinion. It's not like, oh, well, the, the good albums of Queens of the Stone Age or Mastodon or Lamb of God are these ones. You can go, well, I can still appreciate this album, and I feel like it's more my kind of thing. I'm like that with Paradise Lost, for example. But let's stick to Mastodon. Because uh, they're a good example too. I feel like Once More Around the Sun, I don't know how it fared, but there was a lot of tracks on Once More Around the Sun that I really liked. Although I only really gave it a passing interest, like a high, was High Road on that one? I listened to High Road. I listened to the one with the twerking girls in the music video. Uh, 
I remember the song. I like it. It's very like a departure from their other music, but it's interesting. It felt more like Biffy Clyro than Mastodon, to be honest. It felt more like that kind of like genre, like more like turning into like hard rock, but who gives a fuck? It, you know, I like listening to it, so it's fine. Um, yeah, I didn't really... I felt like I've mislabeled High Road, though. When, what era was High Road? Was that... That must have been on that album. Chimes After Midnight. There's a few ones on there where I was like, you know what, Once More Around the Sun's pretty good. Then the new one, newish one, Emperors of the Sand or whatever, that's not very new now, came out. And I listened to, like, a bunch of stuff off of that. Jaguar King, I want to say Jaguar King. Jaguar something. Jaguar God. I, I don't know. I like that. Sorry, my memory is everywhere nowadays, like I said. Oh, man. Queens of the Stone Age, though, they're another band that I have a really strange set of opinions on where everyone's like, these are the good albums. And I'm like, yeah, but you can't ignore these albums. And everyone's like, ah, that's dumb. I don't know why they did that. And it's like, I liked, like, Clockwork. Just gonna throw that out. I like Lullabies to Paralyze. I played that whole album in my car. Whenever I was driving around, I just had that album or some other albums like that around that era. Just playing in my car, beginning to end. But that was around the time I was listening to um, Mesmerize and Hypnotize in their entirety as well in my car. And, uh, who the fuck else? Disturbed. Asylum, I really got into the Asylum album. It's by no means their strongest album, but I fucking love that album, and that's what I mean. A lot of people were like, yeah, it's not good. It's fine, it's not their best, and I was like, fuck it, I like it. Like most of the tracks on that, right down to Serpentine, man. I really love that album. Didn't really like the one that's about Holocaust, but like, or My Child, but like, the rest of that album, I really enjoyed, especially Another Way to Die, and then the one that came after that, not The Lost Children, because that's B-Side Collection, that's still pretty good, but what was the Imm Immortalized? I want to say Immortalized, yeah. I didn't mind it. Everyone clung on to the sound of silence, and I was like, oh, great, another cover. Disturbed always do a cover, and it's always going to be one of those covers where it gets a little bit of attention and people forget about it. But then everyone went, oh my god, the sound of silence, my Disturbed is so fucking good, that cover's amazing, it's better than the original. And I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> like, you know... I was like, to be honest, I prefer that I still haven't found what I'm looking for cover over the original. And um, Land of Confusion is a competent one. Living After Midnight is just literally like David Draymond singing Living After Midnight. They've not made it heavier. They've not really done anything different to it. And I was just like, yeah, you know, cover is par for the course for bands like Disturbed. Even Five Finger Death Punch do it nowadays as well. And, um, because Blue on Black is a, uh, cover, a lot of people in the metal community don't realize that. But a lot of people don't realize I Ain't Superstitious, which is a Megadeth cover, is also a country cover, or blues cover, I can't remember. Yeah. But anyway, um... <clears throat> I didn't mind that album, but I didn't like interact with it as much. Like there were the, like the title tracks and stuff were fine, or like the opener. I mean, not the title track. Um, oh, what's it called? Vengeful one. I was just going through the chorus in my head there. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty good, but it is my favorite by any means. And then they released Evolution and Are You Ready? I really liked, and, uh, and that's about it. What was the other one? Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Reason to Fight. I like that one. 
but it's really just like okay and then it's just not the same it's not like bop after bop after bop I think after the hiatus they kind of just lost a lot of the force a lot of the things that I really liked about Disturbed kind of fell out the window for me personally but like if you still like modern era Disturbed uh, up to you dude like I mean like I just there's a certain period of time where all of these bands I was listening to when I was in college and uni kind of released more stuff and I was like oh more of this uh, I'll go listen to it at some point and I kind of half listened to everything and was like I don't feel like it's like the same for me as it was back then. Not that they should be the same or they shouldn't develop, but just like I feel like the reasons I liked them, like I feel like that's like a certain part and that's done now, you know? Like, and I don't need more of that. I've got the thing I've got, you know? Like, you don't need to keep making aliens movies. I've got the aliens I want. You know, I you don't need to keep rebooting Robocop. I've got the Robocop I want. You know what I mean? So we did that one. Uh, I'm just gonna start up a new one for the uh, championship. 759.